Hello everyone, my name is Louis Wei Yufeng. I'm currently a master's student in the space program in University of Cape Town in South Africa. I'm making this video to talk about my research, which is a prototype I made for active debris removal technology. So, first of all, what is space debris? Space debris has no legal definition set by the United Nations Committee on Peaceful Use of Outer Space. Currently, there are 6,000 tons of man-made space objects, out of which only 6% are operational spacecraft. The theory outlining the cascading effect known as Kessler syndrome. Space debris typically orbiting at 6.5 km per second, which contains energy release ratio of 1 to 1,250. So, during a collision, a 240 grams of debris will catastrophically destroy a 300 kg satellite. So this is my project Medusa, mechanism of entrapment space debris using shape memory alloy. So what is shape memory alloy? If you look at the video on my right, we place nitinol, which is the shape memory alloy we use in the Medusa project, in the environment higher and above its activation temperature. So when you do that, the current state of nitinol will switch from martensite to austenite state. And during the state transition, a force is generated. Now we use that force in the Medusa project to capture and release space debris. So Medusa has got two functions. The first function is capture, the second function is release. So these two functions combine to allow several attempts to chase and capture a single target. You can capture, and if you miss, you can release by activating the release function. Open, close, open, close the capturing mechanism several times. In this test, we will show the capturing application of Medusa. We use the 1U cube set as tumbling space debris. Medusa will approach slowly, simulating a close proximity operation, then capture space debris. In December 2016, the second generation of Medusa was tested in a vacuum chamber in IRS, Institute for Space Systems in Universität Stuttgart in Germany. We conducted three capturing tests and three release tests in vacuum. Test data are then compared to atmospheric test data to see the difference when operated in two different environments. I will be elaborating more on the test results in Adelaide, Australia. See you in IAC 2017.